Ah, uh, the Olympics. An event of sport and the mind and everything. The thrill, the drama, the Olympic records, and the 1,000th time we hear your national anthem, China. Okay, I got carried away. Well, there's one more thing that lives past the Olympics itself. And it is the Olympic game. Video game. Yay. My first remem thought or experience of these kind of games is, of course, Sonic and Mario goes into the Olympics 2008. Such a good game. Such an experience. And then the London Olympic Games 2012. Probably the peak of Olympic video games. With a lot of modes, games, and a great experience altogether. And then this year gave us the Olympic Games 2020 official video game. And it is out there. It does not compare, in my opinion, to London 2012. And I will talk about this in a future video. So I will hold my thoughts about that. But it is out there. So let me talk to you about this game. This game is nice. It focuses a lot more on the children who might, might end up playing this game. And not the adults who grew up on those remembering, those thoughts and those experiences on the former games, like the London 2012. This game has less modes and it looks somehow, although the 9 year experience, worse, but it does have more thought going into the mode. There are the classics like the 100 meter sprint and the 4 by 100 um, madly. There is two swimming competition with the 100 uh, freestyle and the 200 meter medley. There are team games like soccer, basketball, rugby sevens, and my personal favorite of this entire game is baseball, which in my opinion just stole the show completely. And there are stuff like judo, boxing, uh, hammer throwing, and uh, table tennis, tennis, and so on. This game is not what I've expected from the same guys who created London 2012. But there's the thing, it's not the same guys from London 2012. Sega has done probably... Seven or more 180s in personnel. And it's a different team. But the game itself is nice. It's more cartoony than real. And the idea of giving the players super shots or super boosts is fine. Me, personally, I'm not a fan of these ideas. You shouldn't give anybody boosts or anything that gives you, like, a guarantee goal or a guarantee basket or a guarantee something. So, that is an idea all from itself. But, as a whole, this game is nice. There is more customization than ever. And that's probably my favorite thing in here. This year they've done something really interesting, which is the ranked games. Although when you queue up, you might just see the idea of not getting queued up against somebody. A lot. And by a lot I mean a lot. And when you do, it's not good 
connection because it queues you up against anybody from this world. So I got queued with guys from Korea or Chile or whatever. And that's not fun because you get queued up with weird people that live so far that your ping does not really matter because it's going to be a terrible connection anyways. But the idea of the ranked games is nice. Every half an hour you get three games and they change. So that is a nice thing to see. And right now it's dead. The Olympic Games have ended this weekend, last weekend, so this weekend it's already dead. But, it is a nice game to have offline as well. For me, I can probably get lost in baseball. It's great, the The mechanics are really nice and I really like how it plays. And there is a lot of stuff to see. If you want to see me doing a series about this game, please let me know in the comments. And there is going to be another video comparing and doing a live to uh, from 2021 and 2012. Because 2012 was a childhood favorite of mine. And right now this is it about the game. It's a nice game overall. I'm not gonna go into specifics in every game mode because this is not the video to do it. And if you liked, please make sure to like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate those gestures. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.